All right, today we're going to ask you to journey with us to Genesis 2 and 24. We're going to do our concluding lesson on marital strongholds. We've, right. we've done a few other lessons on strongholds. What, what did we already cover? Sexual stronghold and emotional stronghold. This is marital stronghold. This will be lesson three. This is our last lesson. How'd you like that throwback goodie, that old throwback song? <laughs> the throwback, you can feel that thing. Yes, yes, yes. So everybody all right? All right. So just one verse today, and I'm going to kind of highlight a couple of things from the last lesson, and then we want to kind of bring it in. Amen? I want to kind of bring it in. So the Bible says in Genesis 2 and 24, New King James Version, for this reason shall a man leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall be one flesh. Amen? And the two shall be one flesh. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we love you and give you glory and give you honor and give you praise and thank you for your loving kindness your tender mercies and your bountiful blessings. We pray now that you bless our eyes to see our ears to hear and our hearts to feel in Jesus name we pray. Thank you Lord and everybody said come on and clap your hands if you love me. Let me confess at the very outset before we come down and kind of close it out with our illustration, that marriage is a sacred covenant, not a social contract. We have had difficulties in our marriages because the understanding of marriage has escaped us. We have taken a holy thing which is a man and woman being joined together in covenant and came together under a secular term called marriage. Marriage only means formally or legally. That means I'm with a man and a woman are together and they say, we let's make this formal. That means get married. Let's make this legal. Let's get married. But the concept of the institution of marriage being a covenant between a man and a woman escaped us. It, it, it wasn't on our mind. So what we did is we stood and we said words, but we did it with the mindset of a social contract, not a sacred covenant. Marriage is a sacred covenant. Because when the two people go to the altar to get married, they're not alone. They're not alone. When we go to the altar as children of God to get married, it's not just a man, it's not just a woman, but God is also there. And when you get married or enter the covenant relationship, if you don't understand that God is there, then the problem is you have, hear me clearly now, you have two people, are you listening to me? That don't want one flesh. Especially today, people are getting married and and it's, it's not grace, Sister Dansby, it's law. You're supposed to do, and you're supposed to do. You're supposed to do, that's all they know. The woman's position is you're supposed to do this, the man's position is you're supposed to do that. It's, 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 it's not a covenant. It's, it's not the two becoming one flesh, but it's, it's two people who don't want to become one flesh. I don't want to give up my independence. You know, some sisters say, you ain't my father. Oh. 
No, I'm greater than that. I'm your husband. And Sarah called Abraham Lord. You know what makes me greater than you being your father's daughter? You took my name. You left your father and took my name. So no, I'm not your father. I don't want to be your father, but I'm your husband. And in the understanding of covenant, that means a lot. In a social contract, it's just somewhat of another relationship. Like sorority, sister, masora, fraternity, brother. You know, just another relationship. Homeboy, we both from uptown. We both from downtown. We played ball together in school. We went to college. Just, you know, some kind of relationship. So it is a problem when you want to remain two flesh in one house. It is a problem when you want to remain two flesh in one house. And the two shall become one flesh. Uh, let me, come on, Barnett. Come on, Coley. Come on. You want to come up? I'll take, all right, come on up. So let's kind of uh, visualize this. Let's, let's kind of look at this a little bit. Just stand up first. Let's make it clear on who we are. Because everybody needs to understand what the Bible says about who we are. 1 Thessalonians 5 and 23 says, I pray God, this is the Apostle Paul talking to the church, talking to the church of Thessalonica. I pray God that your whole spirit, soul, and body be preserved blameless. He's given us insight that when you look in the mirror, you are more than what you see. In the mirror, you see the outer man. In the mirror, you see the outer man. But it's more to you than that. We are spirit beings first. Somebody shout, I'm a spirit. Not only am I a spirit, I'm a spirit and I possess a soul. My soul is my mind, my will, my intellect, my thoughts, my feelings, my emotions. My soul is my reasoning faculties. I am a spirit that possesses a soul that lives or dwells in a body. It's important for us to understand this. This is how God made the first man, Adam. Amen? Now hear me clearly. Watch this. Look at him. <laughs> so when God made Adam, he made him a spirit. His spirit and the soul were connected. So everything God poured into his spirit, the soul, the mind, the will, the intellect, carry it out. Are you with me? Are you with me? The body was not making any decisions. Your body is your earth house. It's only a vehicle for you to get around on earth. It's not a decision maker. Are you listening to me? The way God created us was spirit, soul, and body. All decisions come because con being connected to God, the Holy Spirit leads us, guides us, and directs us. And so everything in our thought process is based on spiritual things. Amen? And covenant is spiritual. But then we do have a body. Adam had a body, but the only purpose of the body was it was the container of the spirit. Because remember, listen to me carefully, remember the only reason that there's a physical body is because God said all spirits on earth without a body are here illegally because of the firing of Lucifer, son of the morning. The angel that was in charge that went against God, when God fired him, he didn't quit. He got kicked out of heaven. Now he's a spirit on earth. In order for man to have dominion over him, God had to make a rule. And the rule was if you're on earth without a body, you're here illegally. That's why we have authority in the name of Jesus over demons. 
because they don't have bodies. And that's why a demon works hard to get in a body. Are you listening to me? So the body that we see, you got to clean it, but we clean it and we pamper it and we think so much of it. It's not the real you. The real you is the hidden man of the heart. The invisible person is the real you. Now, Adam and Eve disobeyed God and all disobedience is sin. Something happened when they disobeyed God. The spirit man continued to look at the soul of man. But when sin entered into the heart, the soul turned from the spirit to the flesh. Are you listening to me? And so this is what really happened. Face him. You face him. Stick your arms out. So now you have this tug of war. You have the flesh man wanting to rule because of this. But every now and then the spirit man remembers I'm connected to God. And then what? I want to rule. And you have this tug of war. Are you listening to me? So we're spirit, we're soul, and we're body. And the problem is that we are operating on earth as body, soul, and spirit. Shout backwards. backwards. We're operating where decisions are being made from the flesh man, from the natural man, from the carnal man, from the unspiritual man. When the Bible says, no good thing comes from the flesh. No good thing. I don't care how cute you are. I don't care how bad you think you are. Your flesh man ain't got nothing. So now, you can all look straight. Now, understanding that, we now want to do something called marriage, which is a sacred covenant, but we only know it as a social contract. And strongholds exist in our marriage. Divorce happens in our marriage because the body is the uh, foundation of attraction. Y'all can sit down. I get paid. Y'all don't have to stand up that long. I get paid. Y'all don't stand up that long. The body is the foundation of attraction. In other words, you met your husband or your wife or your boo, because everybody ain't married, you met them, and it started, sit up and look straight, don't feel bad, everything's going to be all right. <laughs> just keep looking straight, nobody will know I'm talking about you, just look straight. <laughs> no, I'm playing. <laughs> Listen to me carefully. The body is the foundation of attraction. You met your significant other based on the body, based on an attraction. And that's not bad. That's how I met her. And I love her. 38 years. <laughs> Don't think meeting somebody by attraction is bad. It's not bad. It's not wrong. It just don't last. Oh, I said something big there. Cute don't pay bills. Curly hair don't pay bills. The attraction is not wrong. The problem is in the relationship that's based on the attraction is it doesn't last. It wears off. And when it wears off, then the soul gets involved. Because the soul is now, listen to me, the body is brought me with you because of attraction. The soul is the companionship. I'm trying to keep the company. So the attraction wore off, but my mind is trying to regulate or manage the relationship, not the unity. I didn't get to be 38 years with this woman by not making mistakes. I'm not going to stand here and tell you that I've never made a mistake. I told her the other night, we were with some of our dearest friends in the world, 
We brought three other couples down there, bishops and their wives, hosted them at Caesars. We all went out to eat, just hang out, because they're some of our dearest friends in the world. We've all been pastoring, you know, 32, 33, 34 years. We're all bishops now. And I said something at the table. We were talking about relationships. They said, oh, man, this, oh, man, that. And, you know, Cedric was like, <laughs> he says, start over. Man, I ain't going nowhere. Kim ain't going nowhere. And they just said everything. And I told them, I said, look, let me tell you all something. If I was married to me, I would have left me. <laughs> if I was married to me, I'd have left me. Bad, ain't it? That's what it is. That's what it is. Gotta be. Gotta be. The soul operates on the foundation of companionship. In other words, the attraction has worn off, but now I'm going to try to regulate this relationship. I'm going to try to maintain this relationship, but I'm doing it under the auspices of law. You're supposed to do this. You're supposed. That's all I keep reminding you is what you're supposed to do. We would be better if you do this. We'd be better if you do that. When you going to do this? When you going to do this? I do this. Oh, when the I comes in there, Lord have mercy. That's all this guy right here. I, I, I. Did you hear what Adam said to God when he says, what have you done? The woman you gave me. See, our flesh will lie on, but hate to be lie on. Flesh will tell a lie, but don't lie on your... Whoa, wait a minute. So the mind, the soul, is operating out of companionship. I'm trying to regulate this relationship. Listen, but I'm doing it based on law. What you're supposed to do, I'm not doing it, listen, on united, on unity. I'm not trying to unite us. I'm just trying to keep the company. The attraction wall, but I want to keep the company. You're familiar. Even when I go out, nah, I'd rather be here. And so in my mind, I'm going back and forth and back and forth and back and forth. And the reason it's not working is because you're not trying to unite. Because two can't become one without unity. Two cannot become one without unity. The covenant of marriage is about being united. And so, many of us don't understand that in a covenant relationship, that it is a spiritual relationship. It's a concept that's foreign to us because we didn't get married under sacred covenant. We got married under social contract. So being married spiritually connected, uh, spiritually connected, yes. Do you know the Holy Spirit brings us closer to God and then brings us closer together? The Holy Spirit with our spirit man brings us closer to God and then bring us closer together. Are you listening to me? This is how the covenant of marriage becomes one. It's one in spirit. It's one in spirit. We cannot have two people that don't want one flesh. There has to be grace. That means your husband gets what he does not deserve. Ooh, it got quiet in here. <laughs> isn't that how God treats us? Doesn't that, what, Kelly, isn't that what grace is? We get what we don't deserve. And your wife gets what she does. In other words, when I'm wrong, you do not capitalize on my wrong. You extend me grace. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Had to make sure the mic was on. 
When a spouse, good God, gut punch. When a spouse makes a mistake, you don't get to operate under law and punish them. You're in a covenant relationship. You get to operate under grace. And give them what they don't deserve. And that is how you eliminate strongholds in your relationship. Because the attraction is going to fade. And the companionship of the mind, it's not going to hold it together. Because it's only trying to manage. I just want to keep the company. I don't know why the attraction ain't there no more. How long you think you're going to stay together and you ain't attracted to somebody? How long you think that's going to work, even with a marriage certificate? There has to be a coming to Jesus. There has to be an understanding of what we did was a social contract, but from this day forward, we're going to operate under sacred covenant. We're going to say we're not in this without God, but we're in this with God. And I'm going to be led by the Spirit, and you're going to be led by the Spirit, and we're going to walk as one flesh. Because as long as I'm doing my thing or you doing your thing, it ain't going to work. Are you listening to me? It will not work. The Holy Spirit will bring us closer to God. And then bring us closer together. Amen? And it's nothing like two becoming one. It's nothing like it. All right, brothers, I'm going to say something and, and, and digest it. I know your favorite scripture is wives submit to their husbands. But we're supposed to submit to each other. We're supposed to submit to each other. I told you, I think, in lesson one or lesson two, if you want somebody to make your bed, cook your food, you want somebody to make your bed, cook your food, clean your house, wash your clothes, run your bath water, that's not a wife. That's a maid. That's a maid. You, you bring somebody in to do that. But in covenant, we are one. So I do put the trash out in my house. But on my busy days that I run from 5.15 to 10.30 at night, when I come in, the trash is out. You know who put it out? My wife. She didn't wait for me to come in and say, you know the trash stink. Are you going to put this trash out? Where's this trash going to go out? That's my longest day. I, I operate from 5.15 in the morning to like 10.20, 10.30 that night. And I could do it when I get there, but because we won. Because what? I got this. I come in to check it, it's already done. Not that. Sometimes the trash cans are already pulled from the back out to the street. Because she's not operating under law. That's your job. That's not my job. It's our house. Do I run the vacuum cleaner? You better. I put lines in the carpet. <laughs> I know how to run a vacuum cleaner, put lines in the carpet, take my time, then back up and start again. <laughs> do I wash dishes? Yes. Do I answer the phone? Yes. Somebody called one time, answered the phone. You know what they said? You answered the phone? I didn't think you would answer. I thought your wife would answer. I know you don't want to be bothered. You called my house. I'm going to answer the phone, you called my house. So the stronghold of marriage exists only because marriage was entered into as a social contract, not a sacred covenant. You're not a bad man. You're not a bad woman. It's just misunderstanding is understanding to the one that misunderstood. If I tell Andrew something, and if I tell Andrew to pick me up at 6 o'clock and Andrew thinks 
he's picking me up at my house because he lives across the street from me. But I'm at the church. Misunderstanding is understanding to the one that misunderstood. He's going to pick me up, but his understanding is, well, he lives across the street. I pick him up across the street. My mind is, if I'm home, I don't need you to pick me up. I'm home. So I'm thinking you would know I'm at the church. Do you see how easy it is? So the misunderstanding is understanding to the one that misunderstood. And so, excuse me, and so it's necessary for us to understand that it's a safe covenant. It's safe. It's never too late to start a sacred covenant. To understand we're together because the attraction was there. And if it faded, oh, trust me, it can be restored. You just got to get right in your heart, in your spirit. Say it's an inside job. Listen, <laughs> I'm sorry, baby. I married my wife. She was 20 at about 110 pounds. Yeah, she was small. Yeah. She was small. She was small. She was small. When you operate out of attraction, the reason it fails is because after three babies and two pork chops, things change. So you can't operate out of attraction because that physical, things change. Are, are, are you with me? And when it changes, you can't try to regulate it or manage it from the mind. Are you with me? So start out with it being heart to heart. It's an inside job. I love everything about you. This right here, it got us together, but I'm not basing everything on how you look. Amen? I'm basing it on our connection that's spiritual. Amen? When we do that, the Holy Spirit will help us put to death anything that comes against our marriage. And something will come against it. If you're married, you're going to have tests. If you're married, you're going to have trials. If you're married, you're going to have tribulations. And guess what? They're going to be in the house, not outside. It's going to be right in the house. <laughs> Listen. Listen, it's not a sin to fight. It's the sin to go to bed angry. It's not a sin to fight. Because you're going to fight. If you're married, you're going to fight. And that's not the sin. The sin is going to bed without making it right. So to the lady that leans all the way over to the cord on the right side of the bed, like he better not touch me, you wrong. <laughs> you wrong, sis. You wrong. I'm sorry, you wrong. So when you have a disagreement, get up early and stay up late. Just fight all day. <laughs> just stay up late, just fight all night, but don't go to bed without making right. Because suppose one of you don't wake up. And you have to live with your last cussing words. Because marriage will make you cuss sometimes. Listen, y'all ain't that saved. <laughs> that they don't cuss no more. L listen to this. <laughs> I'm a, and then I'm going to be done. Listen to this. It's a men's conference. I ain't going to tell you who the bishop was. It's a men's conference. And this bishop was preaching for a men's conference. It's going to be about 90 men there. He prepared himself to speak because he takes pride in standing before people and representing God. He put on his shiny black shoes, his designer socks. 
his frock. This is called bishop attire. His frock with his uh, um, rabir, his collar, his cross, his chain, his ring. And then before he went, he says, oh, I got to put the trash out. He grabs the trash, and on the way to putting a bag in the trash, it busts and spills on his clothes, and he says, oh, S. <laughs> and then he looked up and said, who said that? <laughs> and God said, you said it. <laughs> that was some bishop. I ain't going to tell you who the bishop was, but that was some bishop. Just to let the bishop know before he went, you still in the flesh. And your flesh is a trip, and you might fall any day. Miss the mark. That's what sin is. It means to miss the mark. Amen? So, yeah, marriage, it, it'll, it'll make you cuss. It will. But like I said, fighting, disagreeing, arguing, that's not the sin. It's going to be angry. God doesn't allow that. And lastly, let me get up here so I don't catch none of these tomatoes. <laughs> and lastly, if you don't want to have sex, yes, it's sex. If you don't want to have sex, guess what? You don't have the right to tell your spouse no unless you're fasting and they give you permission. You can't say no because you're angry. You're in a covenant, and the Bible says that your body belongs to him and your body belongs to her. And you can only tell the spouse no if you're going to fast. And with that fast, you say, I'm fasting. Will you release me for these many days from my obligation to you? If that spouse says no, give it up. Just thought I'd throw that out there. My time is up, and I thank you for yours. Come on and stand. Now, if you're here and you're not married and get ready to get married, you're getting some of the best foundation you could get. If you're here and you are married, you're getting some of the best foundation you can get. But if I could say anything to encourage married couples, I'm going to say this. Whatever it takes, stay together. Whatever it takes, stay together. I'm not telling you it's going to be easy. But whatever it takes, always keep that in the back of your mind. I'm going to stay the course. I'm going to stay the course. What God has joined together, let no man separate. It's a covenant that you get out of by death. It's a covenant. It's not a social contract. It's a sacred covenant. We've had three weeks on marital strongholds, and I hope I've said something to encourage somebody during these three weeks. We have, what's the next one I'm doing? Debt. So next week, we're going to talk, start teaching on the stronghold of debt. Amen? <laughs> Because the Bible says, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper. And you can't prosper while you're in debt. Debt will choke the life out of you. So we're going to talk about the stronghold of debt. So my time is up, but thank you for yours. I'm going to ask Elder Tony to come. She's going to receive our offering. And then we're going to let you go. Deacons, make sure on everybody's way out, they get their communion cup. Make, put it on a blast, Sister Secretary. 
Monday or Tuesday a time for people to come by and get their communion cups. On Tuesday, I'll be on Zoom this Tuesday doing a teaching and we'll take communion together. Amen? One more thing I wanted to say. I wanted to say one more thing, but it escaped me. What did I want to say, baby? <laughs> oh, to those of you that are giving digitally, thank you. We appreciate you so much. To those of you that are giving digitally, to those of you that are still, still giving by check or, or cash, we thank you. We appreciate you very much. This is our building. We're not paying rent. This is our building. Amen. We own this. We have to maintain the grass. We have the sprinkler system, the heater, the air condition, the, the lights, the making sure the building's painted, making sure the bathroom is clean. And e very soon, we want to do some upgrades, amen, to the building. So we thank you for your volunteer, amen, tithe and offering donation to the church, amen. We appreciate it very much. And lastly, one of the things you might hear me say is you can't buy faithfulness. You can't buy faithfulness. And our musicians are faithful. They are faithful. I'm not saying we don't compensate them. What I'm saying is it's not the compensation. They're just faithful. They're always here and making sure they hold me down. I got you. When I travel, as I say, check your calendar for this. He's like, no, nah, we got you. Lonnie, we will be there. We got you. And they come through. They are faithful. And I publicly want to tell, thank you for your faithfulness because you make what I do easy. You make what I do easy. And we should appreciate them. They are not the podium. They're not a pew, a fixture in the church. Amen. They are part of us. They enhance our service. If you don't believe it, let both of them go on vacation the same day. You don't believe, let both of them be gone the same day. And you will see a major difference. So thank you, brothers. Thank you so much. We all appreciate you. Elder Tony, God bless you, church. I'm going to go change. I'll come back out and say hello.